Hello and welcome back to Talk About Strange. Today I have a follow-up on that Bigfoot and the Wild Woman, so I'm really excited to share that with you. He's seen in the comments all the uh, the support that he got and the questions. People want to know what happened after that. He left us with a little teaser about getting called back to the tribe in that area, the reservation. So we're going to find out what that was all about. But first I want to talk just a little bit real quick about Jane's story. Man, isn't that incredible? That was something else. I really enjoyed that story. Thank you guys for all the love and, and support and, and the kind words that you put in the comment section. That's just incredible. I can tell that you guys were affected by that just as much as I was. I mean, I was left speechless at the end of that. I just, <laughs> sorry about that. I just had to walk away. I was done. I had nothing else I could say. So, you guys now know what a baby I am, all right? Anyway, we're going to get on to this next story. Keep sending these wonderful stories in to us. And, um, you know, it's just really important that we share them and continue to share them and learn like we've been doing. So keep that up. It's phenomenal. Uh, I just want to tell you real quick that my daughter's been working really hard on adding more products to the store. So go check that store out. We got more tumblers on there. She just did another graphic. Uh, she's added different shirts, um, so we got long sleeve, I forget what she called it, but uh, we got shirts, t-shirts, sweatshirts, tumblers, cups, um, so check them out, and if you're gonna, if you uh, want to, if you're interested, join that membership, because then you'll get a discount, and the discount's enough to cover the membership, so you might as well do it, right? Anyway, we're doing great, let's keep on going, and uh, I'm gonna get right on to this story. All right, it's Bill. I have read the comments on the video of the story I shared. Wow, your listeners are great and understanding. I can tell that my experience got to some of them. Here's where I will tell the connecting story. As I said, I was asked to come to the reservation, not by the main tribe, but by a friend of mine, a lady called Nancy. My friend, who I will call Joe, said that the lady seemed very interested in my story. I asked him how she knew about my story. He was not supposed to tell anyone else. Joe assured me that Nancy was the only one. He took me to the single wide trailer just outside the reservation, actually. What I'm about to share with you is my best, the best I remember, as it was 30 years ago. Now the sadness begins, Steve. I am truly sorry upon meeting Nancy for the first time. She was very sweet and she was very stern at times. Joe tells me that you had an experience, she said, as she pointed to the kitchen table for me to sit down. I looked at Joe and he looked away as he could tell I was mad at him. Yes, ma'am. Do me a favor, she said. Pull off your shirt. Steve, my heart sank. I already knew what she was wanted, why she wanted me to do that, so I did. She looked exactly straight at the birthmark, a birthmark that only me and my dad shared. You're the one, she said. Put it back on. How did you know about it, I asked. It was described to me. You was told not to go up the Old West Trail, wasn't you? Now how the hell did you know about that, I asked. I have some sadness for you, some sad news for you, she said. Here, have a drink of this. Moon was what she handed me. Joe joined in with us and I passed it to him. Steve, what I'm about to tell you ripped my heart out. My Fiora was kin to Nancy. Seems about seven months after my encounter, Big had brought her to Nancy. She was going in labor. Big and his clan didn't know what to do. Nancy was able to stop the labor. She then told Big that he'd have to leave her there. She assured him that she'd be safe. Over the next several days, Fiaro told Nancy about the handsome man boy whom she had spent days walking with. I giggled and so did she. She described me perfect all the way down to the birthmark that were under my chest. Joe jumped up and said, Nancy, that sounds like my friend. He was in the mountains at the same time. As I sat there trying to take it all in, she asked, did you really think you could take him? Yes, ma'am, I did, I told her. Oh, and my Fiaro had a name, Light Cloud. But I will keep calling her Fiaro. 
She told me about the way Ferraro talked about me and how she's scared she's going to lose her baby, our baby. Nancy told me that she did her best to keep Ferraro calm. Wait, I said, how do you know her? Nancy said, well, young man, that's history. Steve, I'll try not to mess this up. Nancy had a sister. Her sister was taken by Big. Big had to go. Big had got her sister pregnant. Now she escaped Big. Gave Big a daughter, Ferraro's mother. Now Ferraro's mother had gotten pregnant by a man in the res. Big came back and took his daughter, who was Ferraro's mother. Then she birthed Ferraro with the clan. I hope that's right. I seen a comment that Big may have not been her biological father. He wasn't. Big was her, Ferraro's biological grandfather. Hence why he was so possessive. I was floored by all this. Now the sadness. The baby came at seven and a half months and due to many complications didn't live but a few minutes. That broke me. And my Ferraro. She lived, Nancy said, but I watched her spirit leave her body. Ferraro gave up at that moment. Big sense that the baby didn't make it. He came in, scooped the body up, and left with it. Nancy said that he had been listening. Big let out a scream that would have made the bugs stop making noise. Soon he came back for Ferraro. Young man, she said, as she put her hand on mine and used one to wipe my cheek. Light Cloud lost a lot of blood. He took her before I could stop it. She did die, because Big came back several days later with her body. Nancy said, yeah, he was pushing her towards me and I was screaming, it's too late. I got up and, t and thanked her for telling me. I didn't want to hear anything else. He should have left Ferraro with her. Maybe she would have lived. Maybe after she described me to Joe, after that all happened, he could have came and got me. I don't know. I walked out of the trailer and was shaking my head. He should have left her. Steve, this was the first time in my life that I was filled with this much hate and rage. Oh no, Joe said as he's walking behind me. I looked up towards the pines and I couldn't believe it. I could see Big's outline. I walked towards him. It was dark. No, no, Nancy called. I hollered, you son of a bitch, so that he could hear me loud and clear. Then, Steve, I did what might be the stupidest thing I've ever done. Up to that point, anyway. I threatened Big. Me, just a nobody, and him, eight-foot monster. This is what I said. You killed her and the baby. Big, if I ever see you again, one of us is going to die. By this time, I started talking low. Big began to growl. You're lucky I didn't bring my gun, I told him. Then that's all I could say. She would have been happy with me. I don't know if that's true. Then I walked away from him and went home and lived out my rage. Nancy passed away after that. Then Joe joined the service after 9-11 and was killed in combat. I'm sorry to hear that. As for me, I remain. I know your listeners will all have questions. Nancy knew I had been warned on the trail. Remember me saying that, that I'd eaten with the Native American family on the trail. The man in the group was Nancy's son, his daughter, and her husband. It's really a small world. There are many reasons why I carry guilt. Now maybe your listeners can understand. Perhaps if I just went to the, with the clan, I could have gotten away with Ferraro later. Oh, could have, should have, would have. As for my Fiaro, when I described her, I didn't tell you about her weight or height. I would say she stood somewhere around seven foot tall, a beautiful woman who could have been an Amazon wandering around in North Carolina woods. It's also amazing to me that just one generation and she didn't have any Sasquatch characteristics. No coarse hair, just tall, toned, and beautiful. Was I in love with her? I don't know. I did care deep for her. My grief, learning she may have in fact carried my child, a son, is still deep. What about Big? As I got older, I really couldn't blame him for what he did. He thought he was doing the right thing for his family. So there's no one else here to lay the blame on. That just leaves me. I think about her from time to time. 
I think about what she would have been like today. Would she have adapted to this world or would she have wanted to go back after she's seen how man treats man and went back in the woods with her grandfather? I suppose she would have went with me had Big not stopped me. So all that leaves me with is what ifs. Would I still kill Big? No, I don't think I could. I heard you say that you don't think that Matt Big meant to kill me when he hit me. Nancy said the first time he hit me, Ferraro begged for my life. So who knows what might have happened to me there on the side of that road. I think of my few days with Ferraro finally. Even with what ifs, I know one thing is for sure. For a small time, she was mine. Thanks, Steve, for being interested enough to finish my story. This is the first time in 30 years I've whispered it to another soul. To your listeners, love each other. Be tolerant to what you don't understand. Help each other because that's what we're missing in this world today. If my experience helps you, then it was worth it to share. I do have other separate experiences and maybe someday I will share them. Also, Steve, the graphic lady used in this video you made for my story. You have no idea how close she was to looking like my Ferraro. God bless. Take care, Bill. All right. Well, Bill, thank you for getting back to us with that. That's uh, that's a great follow-up update. I'm really sorry to hear what happened there. It would have been nice if there had been a chance that you guys could have gotten back together, especially to have a child. I mean, there's so many situations, uh, stories like this out there, and people are afraid to talk about them and share them. I, I'm just glad that this channel has put out the opportunity, you know, the, I, the has turned into a place that people can share stories like this and not be ashamed and not be criticized for it. Now well, you get a few people out there that push back, but you know, you just don't even worry about it. You have enough positive people out there. The comments on that last one were phenomenal. I'm sure they'll be phenomenal on here. We got a lot more stories to come for you. I got a lot more new information coming in. I got more follow-ups coming in. I got some follow-ups from Alaska coming in. So we're going to be getting to all that really soon. Thank you again for watching. I'll see you again really soon. All right.